This is Vim. It's that terminal-based text editor that scares programmers because you often find yourself thrown inside of it and the first few times you run into it, it isn't exactly clear how to get out of it. Vim is an amazingly powerful way to edit your code if you're willing to spend the time to learn all the commands and use them efficiently. Just look at all this stuff. This is a little cheat sheet for Vim and there is a lot going on here. Now, personally, I do get the appeal, but for me, that's a rabbit hole to be pulled down some other time. For now, I'm perfectly happy with just regular VS code. But although I may not want to use Vim, it does pop its head up here and there. Occasionally, you will find yourself thrown into Vim, and it is useful to know more than just the runaway command, which is colon Q. So although this may change in the future, I have no interest in mastering Vim right now, but I did want to know enough to where I could competently use it when needed. And for me, that is just a few main scenarios. Uh, for example, you're using Git or something else in a terminal and you find yourself thrown into Vim, or maybe you're just in a terminal environment and don't really want to bother opening a file in something like VS Code. And similarly, maybe you just want to quickly create or add some content to some files and don't want to bust open your IDE. Now, personally, I've been using Nano for a long time to do uh, simple edits of files in a terminal, but I figured if Vim and I are going to have to be occasional friends anyway, I may as well just bite the bullet and learn to use Vim instead because it is a more powerful way to uh, edit your code in the terminal. Okay, so now let's just jump into a file and start willingly using Vim we can just type the following command into the terminal vim and then a file name and that is going to launch the editor for us now this is installed by default on a mac but i think you need to install this manually if you are on windows so now that we're in a file let's just start typing something and of course you can't just start typing with vim that would be absurd so the first weird thing about vim is that it is a modal editor and we have three different modes there is a normal mode, an insert mode, and a visual mode. So normal is what you are in by default, and it is the mode you should spend most of your time. It's generally the mode that is going to be easiest to navigate the file and make large edits. Normal mode is where you can enter in commands to do various things like quit, save, delete lines, search, and navigate around the file. If you need to type into the file, you enter insert mode by typing I, and note that it says insert at the bottom now. You can then add whatever you want to the file and then go back to normal mode by pressing escape. Now, most of us are probably much more comfortable with non-modal editors. So the temptation here is to stay in insert mode all of the time until we are done editing and want to quit or save the file because it behaves more like how we would expect. And you can do this if you like, we aren't looking to be Vim Jedi here after all, but it is worthwhile to use Vim in the intended way. So now that we have some text in our document, we can actually start doing some stuff. So first we have one more mode to cover and that is visual mode. So visual mode is what we are going to use to select chunks of text. We can enter visual mode by typing a lowercase v, and this is going to allow us to select text by character. You can see how it's selecting one character as a, at a time as I move around. If we instead do an uppercase V, we are going to be able to select by line. And if we do control V, we are going to be able to select a block of text like this. So it's kind of like dragging your mouse around on the screen. But in the spirit of learning just enough Vim, you can probably just get away with just using the one version of visual mode with the lowercase V. And now with a chunk of text selected, we might now want to delete it by hitting D. But let's say we didn't actually want to do that. We wanted to copy it. So we can hit U to undo that change. And then we can just make that selection again and hit Y to copy it or yank it. We can then move to wherever we want to paste that copied text in normal mode. But I might want to enter into insert mode to maybe make some space here. Maybe go into a, a new line. And then I can hit P to paste the copied text but we need to be in normal mode for that to work. You can see here, I've just typed the letter P. So first I need to hit escape and then hit P. And another useful thing to know here, especially for uh, code is to control indentation. So we can again, just make a selection in visual mode 
And then we can use angled brackets to increase or decrease the indentation. Okay, so that's the basics of all the modes covered. Now let's just go through some other basic operations we might want to perform in Vim. And first, just some general navigation. So we can just move around in normal mode using the arrow keys, but we might have a long document and that will be a very slow way to get around. So to demonstrate, I'm going to open up my Zish config with Vim. So first I need to exit this document, but you can see if I try to do a colon Q now in normal mode, it's going to tell me that I have had no write since last change. So it's not letting me exit because I have unsaved changes. Now I don't want to keep these changes, so I can just hit Q with an exclamation mark and that's going to force quit. But if you do want to keep the changes, you can type WQ to write and quit. So again, we'll just force quit. And now I'm just going to open up my uh, Zish config here. And you can see this file is quite a lot longer than the other one we're working with. So now to navigate around here, if I want to get to the end of the file, for example, I can type a colon and then a dollar sign, and that's going to take me right to the end. But if we want to just get to the end of the current line, we can just type a dollar sign without the colon, and that's going to take us to the end of the line. If we want to go to the start of the file, we can type colon and zero. And again, if we want to go to the start of a line, we can just type zero instead of colon zero. If we like, we can also navigate by line numbers by typing colon set number, and that's going to now show the line numbers. And then we can just go to a specific line by typing colon and then the line we want to go to. So if I type colon five, that's going to take me to the fifth line. If we just want to jump from block to block in the file, we can use the curly braces. So you can see I can just kind of keep hitting that and it's going to jump me down one paragraph or block at a time. If we want to search for something specific, we can type colon slash and then the keyword that we want to search for. And if there are multiple instances of this keyword found, we can type N, a lowercase N to go to the next result or an uppercase N to go to the previous result. All right, so let's go back to our test file again and play with some saving and quitting stuff. So again, I'm gonna open up Vim test.txt We'll go back into insert mode by hitting I and we're just going to uh, type some stuff in here. So we've already covered this, but let's go over it again because it's important. We'll hit escape to go back into normal mode so we can run commands. We'll try to type Q to quit, but it won't let us because there's been changes. So now we can either type WQ and that is going to uh, save that file for us. So now if we come back into it again, it's all going to be there. Or we could have done colon Q exclamation mark to force quit without saving. So again, still in normal mode now, we can do some basic editing. So we might want to delete a line by doing two lowercase d's. Again, we can hit U to bring that back. If I want to delete backwards, kind of like an option backspace, I can just type DB and that is going to delete backwards. Or if I want to, I can do an uppercase D to delete forwards. So as I mentioned before, it is a good idea to do the bulk of your editing in visual mode where possible. But another useful tip in insert mode specifically is to use control W to delete an entire word at a time, which is just like using option backspace. But you can see here how this is a little bit awkward because now if I wanted to un undo that and I typed U, uh, I'm just going to be typing the letter U. But if I'm in normal mode and I type U, it's going to actually undo things. So as you saw at the beginning of this video, there are a lot more commands to learn in Vim and the amount you can do is really quite incredible. If you did want to spend the time to learn it properly, you most likely will be able to be a lot more uh, fast and efficient at coding with Vim than you would be with a standard IDE. But if you're like me and you've decided to just be casual acquaintances with Vim for now, then what we have covered in this video should be more than enough to get you by. You'll be able to modify your merge commits and make small edits to your package.json file or, or whatever else you want to do. And then when you are doing large amounts of coding, you can just open VS code or whatever you prefer to use. And it is also worth mentioning for those of you who are interested in learning Vim more, there is actually a Vim extension for VS code. So I would just recommend opening up your terminal and practicing these commands. And soon enough, you won't need a reference anymore and you'll be able to just you know, use it naturally. So I'll link to the full cheat sheet I showed earlier in this video in the description, but I'll also include a list of just the commands I used in this video as well. 
Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.